Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you don't already know by this title, we are here for my March wrap up. Like, how did that happen? And it is already April as I am filming this, but without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the six books. Yeah. The six that I read. Alright. The first one I am going to talk about is Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. I finally finished the rest of this book because I found it on audio. Thanks to this Liddy app that I am loving because I'm finding a lot of audiobooks on there that I have. Or, well, the books that I own that I can listen to on audio. We're all over the place today. Anyway, I finally got to read more about the Blackthorn children, and I'm obsessed. And I just want to protect Emma and Julian and Mark, all of them, basically, with my life. And their uncle, he's not all there in the head. He's really not. Especially when he calls Julian his father's name, and Julian has to put up with it because he's basically running the institute instead of his uncle. But the Clays better never find out that it's been Julian this whole time. Because he was like, I don't know, like really young. I want to say, how, how old did they say? I know they say, and I should remember, but I'm like drawing a blank. I want to say 12, but I don't think that's right. But it might be. We'll go with 12. If it's not 12, younger. But he takes care of his sibling. Uh, he takes care of his little brothers and sisters, and then as soon as Mark, their older brother, their older half brother, comes back into the picture to help him solve these mysteries of the murders that have been going on and why they've been going on, and there's a huge twist at the end, and when you find it out, I was like, what? The one of the people who they trusted was it's a shocking ending and if you haven't read it yet I don't want to give it away but if you're into the shadow hunter world and you miss it definitely pick up Lady Midnight because Clary and Jace do make an appearance in this one and I kind of liked it a lot obviously all right Moving on from Lady Midnight. Can you tell I don't want to? <laughs> Alright, the other book I finally also had finished is Half Bad by Sally Green, and I loved it, honestly. I didn't, I knew I would like it, but I didn't know how much I would like it. Because there is this guy named Nathan. He is a half code. He is half black and half white, which meaning that he's a half code. And the people in his world, the council, who are just playing a rude to him because of who his dad is, which it's not the kid's fault that the dad went through all these things that he did, like eating other people's hearts. Like, that's gross. But I guess if you're a witch, I guess that's what you do. But when he gets locked up and he gets mistreated badly by these people because, again, of what his dad did. Because his dad is like a criminal killer and he is wanted for his life, basically. And they just put all the pressure on his son, which he had no control over. He wasn't even born yet when those things were happening. Like, why... Must you torture poor Nathan? Nathan didn't do anything! Ugh! 
frustration is real. But he somehow powers through that and he keeps hoping to meet his dad. And da 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 da. Before he gets his three gifts on his 17th birthday, he meets his dad for the very first time. And that's all I'm going to say there because I don't want to give it too much away what happens when he finally meets his dad because it's the meeting meeting of the book you've been wanting since the first chapter basically when he starts talking about his dad and he doesn't think his dad is a whole bit of a bad guy but in the end he kind of is but you know there's a reason for everything all right moving on the next book I read was Sadie by Courtney Summers, and for this one, I would highly recommend the audiobook for because the broadcast in it is a broadcast on the audiobook, and it's pretty cool, actually. And a thing to know about Sadie, she can be a little dangerous, not too badly, but she is also a stutter as well which I didn't know anything about before I went into the book, but it was still really good. One don't, doesn't usually talk about how she's a stutter. But in the end, she found her mom's ex-boyfriend that she had been looking for through her whole journey, and the broadcast person is, like, behind in catching up to Sadie. But... There is a twist at the end that you don't expect to see coming, but Sadie did get what she wanted from the beginning of the book. She found him. That's all I can say is she found him, but there is a twist, and if you have not read Sadie yet, and you don't want to know the twist, bye-bye. See you when you've read it. But she finds this guy named Keith who, that's what he was known as when he was with her mom and family, but the more she goes looking for him, the more she finds out that he has more than one name, which is really weird, but at the very end, she gets her revenge, and in the process, he gets her, like he gets her little sister that he basically murdered a 13 year old and she is out for blood to find her sister's killer and let's just say she obviously did and I believe it also took her life as well and that's all I'm pretty much going to say about Sadie it's it was a really good, fun ride. I, like I said, I would recommend the audiobook for this. And it's not a disappointment. You're going to love it. Hopefully, you're going to either love it or hate it. Or in between. But definitely, check it out. Alrighty. The next book, I don't know why I took so long to get to this a book, but probably because I wanted to read the series before this one, even though they're not connected, but that is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Matz. Basically, this is about a 19-year-old huntress named Farah who killed a wolf to help feed her family because they're poor and they don't have a lot of food. But basically what she didn't know when she shot at the wolf, it was a fairy who can transform into a wolf. But she didn't know that at the time, and she sold him and skinned him. But basically, a life for a life. So when his friends came and found her, and then takes her hostage for a little while. It's just, it's a crazy mess, let me tell you. I'm trying to explain it, I'm not doing the best job at it, but basically, like I said, it's a life for a life, and at first she's 
kind of miserable and she doesn't trust them and she doesn't want to eat any of their food because she doesn't know if it's been poisoned or not, which it really wasn't, but, you know, who's to say she's going to trust them because they are just meeting and, like, towards, like, the middle section, she ends up falling for one of the keen lords in the book and, oh, it's just lost the twists and turn. And, like, towards the end, she kind of gets locked up. I am not sure which queen is worse. The one that's in this story or the one in Throne of Glass. I, I want to see the one in this story because she was a brutal monster. Nothing like Maeve, but maybe like Maeve all at the same time because I hated her. I can't remember her name. All I know is that I hate the queen in this story, and dun dun dun. <laughs> Alright, moving on. The next story I got to is a graphic novel, uh, Death Note. This is the first volume, but I read volume two because I haven't, I didn't finish that yet, but... I still like Light and the Death Note guy, the Death God, that's what we're going to call him, the Death God, because basically that's what he is, but he, Light gets his hands on more people on who to kill, because it's not just the criminals that he's killing, now he's stepping up his game and killing some people on the police force. And, which he should be very careful, because his dad is on the police force. But, don't think he has a reason to kill his dad, but it's just crazy. And then, the cop's ex-fiance was trying not to catch on to Light, but she really should have gotten on to Light, because he was the killer, and asking her all these questions, and she even gave him a fake name. And then he asks us to see her ID shortly after, which, she's so stupid, she shouldn't have done that. Because once she did that, he knew exactly who he was going to kill next. And I wish he would have put two and one together and been like, um, no, I'm not giving you my ID, so you can kill me. Like, thank you, bye. But that wasn't the case in this story. But overall... I really enjoyed reading Death Note, I didn't think I would, but I don't know exactly when I'm going to get into the next volume, I'm hoping very soon, because I need to know what happens, and I'm hoping Light never gets caught, but I have a feeling he just might. Alright. The next book I did read and finish in March is at Five Feet Apart by, we're not going to even try, but we'll just do this, yes, basically it's about a girl named Stella and a guy named Will, they both are in the hospital because they're getting their treatment because they are, oh, saying the name for me is really hard, but they both have this disease where they can't be within five feet apart of each or six feet apart of each other because of their condition and they're breathing borrowed air and basically their lungs suck and they're waiting on to get new lungs so they can be healthier and they can live for a good amount of time and Stella eventually falls for this guy named Will. She at first wasn't going to, but in the end, it was really cute. They fell for each other, and she even threw him a little fun special birthday party that he wasn't expecting. And then there was another third guy in here who I kind of hate that they had killed him off in the book and in the movie as well. But he was your only, um, LG character, and they just killed him off. 
Like, why? Why hurt him? I mean, I know in that condition, they're about to die eventually. But the way... Ugh. It just tore Stella apart. Because she's been friends with him the whole time. She's been going to the hospital. And as soon as she found out about his death, it was really hard for her. But... Will was there to help her out, and it was just really sweet and really cute, and I liked it. <sighs> Those poor kids, they have to go through a lot. But, overall, I thought it was really good, it was really cute. I keep saying really cute. <laughs> it was, don't judge me. But... It was a really quick, easy, fast-paced three ow. Um, <laughs> but if you're hesitant to pick up Five Feet Apart, uh, maybe try the audiobook because it was really good. And basically that's all I have for this wrap-up, and it's going really longer than it should, but it is. Oh, well. But... Those are the six books that I read in March, and if you've read any of them, let me know down in the comments, and maybe we can talk about it, and if you're new here, go ahead and hit that like button, and hit that subscribe, and the notification bell, so you don't want to miss further videos from me, I try to post when I can, it's been a little while, but I do try, and I will see you guys next time for my April wrap-up because we're already in April and it's crazy let me tell you all right all right bye guys